You're watching CBS 5 News, asking tough questions, getting you answers, telling it like it is. It's made out of the velvet off of deer antlers. So why did baseball just ban it? We'll explain. Some athletes are always looking for an edge, but what if that edge came from the antlers of a deer? A new type of substance is out there that mimics the effects of steroids. It's becoming so popular that Major League Baseball has banned it. The spray is made of velvet scraped off the antlers. It is said to give you better sleep, bigger muscles, and a clearer head. It's mainly used as a tonic. I mean, the Chinese have been using it for over 2,000 years. Uh, and so it's basically meant to help revitalize someone who is in need of that. Um, taking hey folks, welcome back to Good Morning Maryland. I'm Greg Arnold. Uh, my sponsors, uh, one of my sponsors asked us to uh, run this segment that you're about to watch. And we're going to put it on their websites as well, all of their health websites. Folks, there's a lot of, we, we, what they don't want you to do is spend the family inheritance on deer antler velvet IGF-1. This stuff has a place. It works. It really does work. But it can kill you. And they want us to express this to you so that you can watch what we're about to show you and understand how this stuff works. Just because a certain Super Bowl football player, Ray Lewis, uh, was accused of using this stuff and came back and, and healed miraculously quickly from this injury that he had and Terrell Suggs and BJ Singh because of his back and different athletes have used this stuff. Keep in mind what it actually does and these segments following me right now are going to explain that to you because these are doctors, these are research doctors that really know what they're doing. This stuff works one and only one way. If, they're, if you're injured if you have a torn muscle, if you have a broken leg, if you have an injury, IGF-1 will rush to that area, just like an army of antibiotics, so to speak. It'll run to that area and it will heal it quicker than you can imagine. IGF-1 is in children's bodies and all of our bodies when we're young and we're growing up. What happens at a certain age, we start losing the ability to create this stuff naturally. Now, if you take this on an even keel and you maintain it on an even keel and don't try to become, um, it doesn't make you muscle bound. It won't create lean muscle mass. It won't do that. It will heal. Now, what happens when you keep on these high doses of what's making you heal? Your cancer cells in your body, and we all have them, will start eating that stuff. They love it. And cancer cells, as you're going to find out, are immortal until they kill the host, which is you and me. So the stuff is great. You wouldn't take, you don't take antibiotics when you don't need them because they're good for you. Because why? You'll build up a tolerance to them. You don't uh, eat too much food. Why? Because you get fat. Anything in excess can considerably hurt, except for nitric oxide. That's the only thing you can't take too much of. And that really stimulates the anti-aging process and the reversal of the aging process. As I've said many times, and I'm not afraid to admit it or ashamed to admit it, I was an alcoholic for 40 years, a half a gallon a day of vodka and two packs of cigarettes a day. I quit that, I got on this stuff, and quite frankly, for the beating that I've given my body, I'm still not in that horrible look. If I really should look like the guy from Tales from the Crypt, okay? I'm not saying I'm Rock Hudson or Brad Pitt. But here again, 60 some odd years, uh, 40 years, I'm sorry, I'm 64, 40 years of punishing your body with a gallon, a half a gallon of vodka a day, you don't, you know, you'd have a lot of wrinkles, trust me. It has nothing to do with genetics. My mother looked her age when she died, my father looked older when he died. The bottom line is just watch what I'm about to show you, then make your decision on how much of this stuff. Look, my sponsors want to sell you this stuff, but they want to do it in a responsible manner. They don't want you taking this to, all you're going to do is make people selling this stuff if it's real, if it's real that they're selling you. All you can do is line their pockets and hurt your body. This stuff works when used in the right manner. Watch this, please. What is the mechanism by which our diet can affect our levels of this cancer-promoting growth hormone IGF-1? Imagine you're a kid with some tinker toys. Then Christmas come early, and you get a, one of those huge sets dumped down in front of you. All excited with this new load of building raw materials, you may really start scaling up. 
And basically, it's the same thing with your liver and insulin-like growth factor 1. When you dump a load of protein on your body, your liver's like, whoa, look at all this. What are we going to do with it all? We can't just waste it. We've got to do something with it. Let's, let's just start growing stuff, add a few new additions, maybe a new wing. So your liver decides to start pumping out IGF-1 to tell all the cells in the body, it's growing time. Be fruitful, multiply, spare no expense, go crazy. Look how much excess protein we got to work with. The problem, of course, is that some of the new additions may be tumors. When you're a fully grown adult, cell growth is something we want to slow down, not accelerate. So one might imagine the goal would be to maintain adequate but non-excessive overall protein intake. We know excess cellular growth isn't so good when we're fully grown adults, since budding tumors may end up being the main beneficiaries of higher levels of circulating growth hormones. But in some circumstances, a little extra growth is sought after, particularly for men in this culture, though not exclusively. The growth hormone IGF-1 is the reason some dogs look like this, and others like this. But what about those who strive to be the big dog? Yes, lower circulating levels of IGF in vegans lowers cancer risk, but might that interfere with their accumulation of muscle mass? There certainly are lots of plant-based bodybuilders, but maybe they're the exception. To look like this, does one have to risk looking like this? Paul, telomerase hit the headlines. However, I think we have to put it into perspective. It is not the fountain of youth. However, it is a significant breakthrough. We have to put it into a much larger perspective. First of all, we know that DNA is sort of like a shoelace. It has plastic tips at the end. Every time a cell reproduces, the tips get shorter and shorter and shorter until finally they fray. And you know that your shoelace without the plastic tips will simply fall apart. That's what happens inside a cell. A cell, for example, your skin cell, will divide about 60 times. That's called the Hayflick limit. Then the cell goes into senescence and eventually dies. So in some sense, every cell has a biological clock. It is doomed to die after about 60 reproductions. However, telomerase can eliminate uh, some of the, the contraction of the chromosomes, and the chromosomes can maintain their length. So at first you may say, aha, we can now defeat the biological clock, but not so fast. First of all, cancer cells also use telomerase. Cancer cells are immortal. Cancer cells are immortal, and that's precisely why they kill you. Why are cancer cells so dangerous? Because they are immortal. They grow and they grow and they grow until they take over huge chunks of your body, meaning that your bodily functions cannot be performed and you die. So we have to make sure that when you hit ordinary cells with telomerase, that you don't also trigger cancer in the process. Aging is the buildup of error. That's all aging is, the buildup of genetic and cellular error. As cells begin to age, they begin to get sluggish because genetic mistakes start to build up. Now cells, however, have a repair mechanism. They can repair damage to their cells. Otherwise, we would all basically rot uh, very soon after birth. All right, I want to talk to you about insulin-like growth factor 1. I think most of you heard this term. Let me just review it for a minute. Insulin-like growth factor 1 is a powerful growth hormone in the body. Okay, it's made in the body. And uh, it looks like insulin, but it has just a little segment of the molecules that's different. Now, insulin is a growth promoter. The insulin you make in your pancreas promotes growth. Now, insulin-like growth factor 1 has become a very important subject. The dairy industry uses this, this knowledge to promote dairy because they finally have the mechanism to show why consuming dairy products makes stronger bones because it raises insulin-like growth factor 1, as we're going to talk about in a minute. But the downside to this is not only does insulin-like growth factor 1 promote the growth of normal tissues, like bones, but it promotes the growth of abnormal tissues, like cancer. And so in cancer research, insulin-like growth factor 1 is one of the hottest topics out there. Folks, uh, uh, this isn't one of those uh, segments where it really is, you know, it's only a cold sore 
and the checks in the mail deals? No. These guys know what they're talking about. My sponsors would love to sell you this stuff by the literal um, gas truck load. But they're responsible people. Everybody that, I'm, that, that, that sponsors our show, we check them out. And when they came to us and said, hey, man, you, you've got to get the word out. We don't want to dissuade people from buying from us, but we don't want to kill them either. So if you're injured, you saw what the guy said, this stuff, I'm going to explain it in layman's terms, it rushes to the place of the injury. It isolates it. Your body's telling it, hey, man, I need some help over here. Like, let's say, if Ray Lewis really used it, okay? If Terrell Suggs, who was supposed to be out for two years with Achilles tear, and came back in record time. If he really uses it, who cares? It's the, the, the reason that, that, that Major League Baseball and the reason the NFL banned this stuff is because it, it thought it gave their, the other athletes an unfair advantage. Baloney! It just, it just healed them faster. If your Aunt Mabel is injured, give her high doses of it. This is what uh, my sponsors are telling me. And it'll isolate the injury and it'll get in there and help it repair faster. It's all it does. It enhances IGF-1. IGF-1 in turn goes in there and it's another term that you heard in there called Teslarama or something like that. It starts with a T. It enhances that. That's your basic DNA. But if you keep enhancing things, those cancer cells aren't going to sit back and say, hmm, there's another one. Hmm, there goes another one. Quink, they're going to grab one. And when they do, then you got other problems. Much worse than the injury that you took the stuff for. Basically, if Aunt Mabel, Aunt Matilda, whatever your aunt's name is, she takes this stuff for an injury. She's not going out the next day and throw for 700 yards in the NFL. She's not going to throw a baseball 100 miles an hour. And she certainly ain't going to hit any home runs. She's going to get back to what she did before faster. She's not going to cook any faster. She's not going to be able to open up jars of mayonnaise any, any better than she did before. It doesn't make you stronger is the point I'm trying to make. You guys that are out there that are buying this stuff, thinking that you're going to look like Hulk Hogan in a matter of one month, two months, or three months, it ain't going to, it ain't going to happen in ten months. What it will do and how it will make you stronger is if, in fact, you're hurt and can't work out, that's when your muscle turns to flab. That's when you get weaker. It'll get you back to the weights. It'll get back to your training regimen faster. Therefore, yeah, you could say it makes you stronger. But it doesn't get in there like Popeye with his can of spinach and give you ultra super strength right away. And I think too many people think that and too many people are blowing a whole lot of money. It's not necessary. Stick with your essential amino acids. Stick with your, your arginine that creates nitric oxide. That's the winner. That won't hurt you. Because when that gets near cancer, cancer goes like this. Cancer don't want to fool with nitric oxide, okay? So the bottom line is we want you to listen. The sponsors want you to be to purchase responsibly. That girl there, she'd been taking too much IGF. She just lost 900 pounds. Thank you, folks. I hope you have a healthy and safe weekend.